Welcome back to the Car and Bike Show. Now, we promised you more action and that's exactly what all our contest winners are going to get to experience because uh, it's a special evening that we've got planned for them and uh, they also get a chance to interact, as promised, with the top management at Toyota Kirloskov Motor. So I'm going to head in and get a quick uh, sort of a head start on the evening. Before that though, there's another big event that uh, is something we want to focus on this week which is the annual convention of the Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers. So as usual, a lot gets discussed and a lot happens. Big newsmakers show up. Here's a quick glimpse of what happened there and then of course we're going to bring you right back to our special evening. We are looking at uh, one more uh, product uh, next year, early, early part of uh, next year or end of this year. Mm -hmm. So what, what sort of a, a product are you looking? New scooter as of now I don't want to uh, highlight uh, the key points of that. I think uh, it is getting ready and okay. at the appropriate time definitely I'll share with uh, the kind of scooter. So, but so the, the one which we are talking about now the end of this year or the early part of next year is not a scooter then? No, there is a, there is a, there are uh, two products which we are coming up. See, we are looking at seven to eight new news to the customers uh, this year, like customers have got used to uh, over the last few years. Uh, so uh, these are uh, just two of those seven or eight. Uh, we had also prior to these uh, two announced a couple of uh, new launches this year, uh, which were uh, Hunk and Super Splendor. So going forward, you will see at least three or four more uh, in the remaining part of the fiscal. Uh, Basically, between new models, variants, and refreshes, uh, there should be in all about seven to eight new news. That is still calendar year 2012? That's for the fiscal. So going there seems to be good for two-wheelers, but there is a broad theme here, isn't it, Siddharth, so in this whole uh, sign conference? Well, yes, Madhu, this is, of course, a broad theme for the industry the last few months, not just here at the convention. And uh, we're, of course, talking about diesel. We've seen the market skewing towards diesel vehicles, especially in the case of passenger cars. and. Uh, what we have also seen is a little bit of a controversy or a little bit of spice that got generated because you actually had two government representatives uh, talking about this move to diesel. Montek Singh Aluwale on the one hand is uh, talking about how the differential in the prices between diesel and petrol is something that is completely illogical from an economic standpoint but then of course you have Tuffle Patel coming in and saying that look while we understand that uh, there are political compulsions as well and the industry of course is now grappling with this sudden shift towards diesel uh, and that preference by consumers as well. Here's the entire diesel story for you now. Uh, this, the present distortion between diesel and petrol prices is a very major distortion that simply has to be corrected. So I would hope that uh, industry sees it in its interest that that distortion should be corrected. Uh, and I think exactly how it will be done, exactly when it will be done, I don't know. Uh, but I think that is, that is one factor. Diesel uh, technologies of the future are more fuel efficient and cleaner and that has been uh, in use now in Europe and increasingly more and where the environmental concerns are at the highest. So in our country while we acknowledge that diesel technologies are not uh, very fuel efficient and uh, neither are they I would say cleaner but the, that is for the present. In the future we certainly need to move towards a new technology. Absolutely still the art engines on diesel. Yes. I mean, the one which we are giving it on Varna or the one which we gave it on I-20 uh, clearly are one of the best engines in the world. So it's not that uh, from our side we are any, anything lagging behind in terms of technology. So I think the same engines would continue but now also we have taken a decision to build eng a diesel engine plant here. So which of course from the point not only because the differential in terms of petrol and diesel we also know that you know going forward it may the, dif the difference may change yeah. but it's clearly from the point of the actual need which uh, the demand which will grow because of the good quality diesel engines Great. so I mean going forward maybe by 2013 end we would have our engine plant operative and we will have a whole range of engines being manufactured here a uh, small diesel engine is under development however it's it's a long way off uh, and we still haven't decided which models it would go into. So that is still to be uh, figured out. Those were some of the big voices, the big news makers out of the Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers annual convention. And of course, remember that we are going to be tracking this new development as far as the shift to diesel is concerned, as well as, of course, what happens with the festive season that's pretty much around the corner. Lots of new launches also expected in that time, as you heard from the two-wheeler manufacturers too. So plenty to look forward to, and the pressures for the industry will also continue. So we will be tracking all of that. <laughs> 
data sales are slipping currently, even as JLR sales zoom. Now, of course, 56-year-old Carl Peter Foster, or CPF as he's known internally, is stepping down as the global CEO at Tata Motors. That's indeed an important development for the global auto industry. Now, he cited personal reasons for this, but uh, remember, he's going to stay on on the board of Tata Motors as in a non-executive capacity. Ralph Spates, the CEO at JLR, and Prakash Tilang, the MD at Tata Motors, will now report directly to the board. Tata is, of course, not committing at this point for any sort of a possible replacement or filling of that gap for the position that CPF will vacate. The position was created in February 2010. And don't forget, it's around the same time that Ravi Kant went from being MD and got elevated to vice chairman at Tata Motors. So we expect that perhaps maybe he'll once again start playing a little bit more of a direct role. Now, Carl Peter Foster has been known as being very aggressive with his overall strategy across uh, his career, and that includes the big rejig that he conducted at JLR as far as management goes. He brought in the fellow German Ralph Spath, a CEO, for instance, and that's uh, reaped rich dividends. He also began monthly meetings at both JLR and the Tata Fiat joint venture in India. And much of the reworking of Fiat strategy in India has come as a part of those board meetings. Uh, this, of course, includes the small car project that Fiat has for 2013 for the Indian market and also using Fiat's global network for Tata Motors, especially in Latin America, for brands like Indica and Nano. Now, of course, Fiat's own uh, brand stores in India. That's, again, been a strategy that came from a suggestion made by Carl Peter Foster. So you will see that rollout, of course, over the next few months of Fiat's own branded retail stores. He's also, of course, uh, talked about opening a new R&D chapter for both JLR and Tata Motors and lots of synergies there, especially on the engine development side. A quick look also at CPF's own bio data, so to speak. He, of course, has been the group uh, VP at General Motors on a global level. Prior to that, uh, he's of course had a long innings at General Motors, so uh, he's also uh, headed GM's Europe business, did pretty well there in terms of overall sales for Chevrolet and Opel. He's been, of course, uh, the chairman of Saab as well, which used to then be a GM subsidiary. And in fact, the sale of Saab and possible sale of Opel is where the points of conflict happened for CPF, and that's how he left GM. Uh, he, of course, headed Opel as well before that. And uh, prior to all of that, spent 13 years at BMW, which included a board position, and previous to that, uh, also heading BMW's South Africa operations. He started his career way back in 1982 at McKinsey in Munich.